Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. We continue with a transient response of first order circuit. That is our example 8 and we will consider a RL circuit having a dependent source. What we have is a voltage source independent voltage of Vm, two resistors R1 and R2 and an inductor and we have a current controlled voltage source and this the value of this voltage source will be depend on the current flowing through the resistor given as such. What we like to know is the current through the inductor and also the voltage across inductor, across inductor as a function of time for t larger than zero. The values for the components are given uh, on the right in blue. So what we would like to know is ex exactly the following this procedure what we have discussed in the previous examples and we'll come up to the value of the or the expression for the inductor current and using the formula we can go from the inductor current to the inductor voltage. So actually that uh, part is uh, pretty straightforward. So let's start with the procedure. So what we know is what we like to know is the situation for before the change is has made. So actually before the switching. So before the switching, this branch will be a short, it will be an open circuit. So there's no current flowing. So what you have is the circuit uh, um, uh, the VM in series with the R1 and R2 and the inductor. So I will redraw that circuit. So what you have is the VM and in series with the two resistors R1 and R2 and what we also know is we rating for a long 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 time and the inductor behaves actually for very st for steady state for DC actually as a short so we can consider this as a short so we can model this so we can model the inductor is short and we can determine the current for this situation and this situation for the inductor is the initial value so we would like to know what is the initial inductor current for this case so how do you calculate inductor current for this case if you want to know the inductor current for the for this initial condition you can also calculate the inductor for you can also calculate the current flowing through these resistors and you can use that because it's a series to determine the required value of the inductor current. So I will do that. I will say the inductor current for the initial condition is actually the Vm divided by the series resistor resistance we are seeing. So it's R1 plus R2. So what you have is 12 divided by 6 plus 9. That will be 4 divided by 3 amps. So that's actually the situation what we have here and this is the initial value of the inductor current so the initial value okay that's actually for part one for part two we would like to consider the situation when the switch is closed so when the switch is closed we get a new branch in the circuit this one and again we waited for a long 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 time again we can model the inductor as a short circuit and we will calculate again the current for that situation. So let me redraw the circuit for that part. So what we have is again, we have the VM. So this is the, in, that is the independent voltage source. We have the R2 still in place, R1, I mean, and there is a dependent voltage source and there is an R2 and we have the short and I will make it clear like this to designate the short for the inductor and this is the situation for the final value or the steady state value so let's make this also clear by designating this the X and the current through the resistor R1 is the I1. Okay, so what is actually the current IL at steady state? Now let's see make a voltage loop at the left side. So that will be Vm is equal to R1 times the I1 plus Vx, which is actually two times I1. So and this is all at infinity, of course. So if you want to, if you want to make it more clear, so you can say this is actually the situation 
for steady state. Okay, so let's fill in what we have, uh, what, what's given. So 12 is equal to 6 times i1 final value plus 2 times the i1 final value. And this will be 12 is equal to 8 times i1 final value. So this will be i1 final is 12 divided by 8 and this will be 3 divided by 2 so 1.5 amps okay that means the vx for the steady state condition will be 2 times i1 at infinity and this will give us 2 times 3 divided by 2 is 3 volts so that's actually the situation for Vx. So you can cons you can uh, ask the question why you would like to know the voltage at point x, because if you know the voltage at point x, you also know the voltage across the resistor R1, and if you know that, you can also know the current through R2, R I mean R2. So you can also know the current which is flowing through the inductor at steady state. So the inductor current at steady state is in c is the same as the res uh, the current through the resistor R2. So I I can right now then the inductor current at steady state will be vx at infinity divided by r2 so that will be 3 divided by 3 that will be 1 amps and this is the steady state condition or the steady state value or final value Okay, now the third part is the uh, time constant, and if you know that, and then you can uh, set up the equation formula for the inductor current IL as a function of time. What do we do for calculation for determining the uh, time constant? You actually look at the circuit and you switch, you make the switch, or actually you close the uh, switch, and you let the circuit going, and you look between the terminals of the inductor and you, see, you, you calculate what you see for for the TVN resistance so you disable all the independent sources that actually vm will be a short circuit if it is current sort it will be open and you would like to know what's the TVN resistance seen between the terminals of the inductors so that's actually the situation so we can use this circuit actually only the only change we need to make is make a short here and replace this with a test source. So I will do that also. So this is our time constant. So what was the time constant? Let's uh, write it down. For time constant, we need the inductance. We already have this, but we also need the Tevin resistance seen by the inductor terminals. So if I make the short for the M, and I draw the rest of the circuit, which is required to calculate this. This is a 2 times I1. And we have all, also the R2. And I can, all, of course, place an inductor here, which is, which is there. Just true. And let me also make the current and also place this point as X make the situation clear so the terminals between the terminals actually what you want is you would like to know what is the Tevin resistance seen between the terminals of the inductor so what you do is you replace so you remove the L and you place and I will make this in black you place a test voltage or test current doesn't matter so you place a test voltage and you determine the resulting test current and the ratio of that is the Tevin resistance. So the Tevin resistance, I will write it at the left side, Tevin resistance will be the ratio of the test voltage divided by test current. This is a very general uh, formula and general uh, procedure. So keep in mind if you want to calculate the resistance seen between two points, you can always do that 
it doesn't matter how complex your circuit will be. Okay, uh, let's uh, again set up a voltage equation for the left part. So that will be two times two times I1 will be minus R1 times I1 because the voltage is oriented from uh, from the from point X to ground, but the current is flowing here from left to right, also from the bottom to the bottom, to the top. So that's actually the minus sign. So what you get is two times I1 is equal to minus six times I1, and this will give me the eight times I1 will be zero. And the condition for this is only possible if I1 is zero. So that will be the situation. And if I1 is zero, then I can say, then Vx is also zero because that's two times I1 and it will be two times zero is zero volts. If this is zero volts, that point, that will be the short circuit. So what you actually see, and this is again uh, not so not so difficult, so R tfnn is actually only R2 because R2 and then it goes to ground. So actually you're again at the point where you want where you want to uh, finish. So then what you have is this the R tfnn is equal to R2 which is 3 ohms. Now we can now uh, fill in the equation for the inductor current. So the inductor current IL Let's write it down again symbolically. So IL at infinity, which is the steady state value, the initial value minus the steady state value of the inductor current between the parentheses times e to the power t divided by tau. So we would like to fill in the uh, required parameters here. So we already calculated all, the, all of them. So the initial value was 4 divided by 3. So 1.333 approximately, this is 1, so we can all fill this in, and then we have also the tau. We haven't calculated that yet, to be honest. So tau, it will be the R Tevenin. Let's calculate it also. So L divided by R Tevenin will be 0 0.015, so it was 15 millihenries divided by 3. So it will be 0 0.005 seconds or 5 milliseconds. Okay, that part was missing. All right, so we have uh, also the the tau. So what you get, what you now have is IL at infinity. That is the one plus four divided by three minus one e to the power minus T divided by 0.005. So what you have is IL as a function of time is 1, if you simplify it a little bit, is 1 plus 1 third times e to the power minus 200 T amps. This is actually the part for the inductor current. So for the inductor voltage, I will... Uh, Continue the blue to make this uh, clear. So what you want is you use so inductor voltage. What is that? That is the VL as a function of time is the inductance times the inductor current derivative of the inductor current. So and what is that? So let me move this a little bit to the left to make some space. So what you have is the inductance is given 0 0.015. You take the derivative of the expression that we have here. So I place this here between the parentheses. So I get 1 plus 1 divided by 3. So 1 third times e to the power 200 t. So if you do the math, you get 0 0.015 times, and this will be uh, multiplied, so minus 200 will be multiplied by uh, one third, so it will be in exact form minus 200 divided by 3 times e to the power 200t. 
And if you again simplify this, this part, so minus 200 divided by 3 times 0 0.015 will be 1. So that will be the situation here, and then the final result will be minus e to the power minus 200 p in volts. So this is actually the situation for the voltage across the uh, inductor, and that is the uh, formula what we, are, what we were looking. So again, note, once you know the inductor current, the expression for the inductor current, the inductor voltage is restored for this part is uh, much more uh, easily and much shorter than the situation and the procedure we have uh, considered here in the in black and, and in the previous section. So this is actually for this example, for the eighth example about the transient response. We will continue with the other examples that I will uh, also upload for the second order systems, which are much more interesting and also much more complicated. So uh, keep in touch and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. So share this video, so it will be also a benefit for other people. And don't forget to like and have a, have a nice day and good luck with your studies. Thank you very much.